I'm going to continue. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Team A's presentation. I'm going to talk you through our what, who, how, uh, and why. Um, but I'm going to start off by introducing our team. So, starting with myself, my name is Anita Shervington. I am from the UK. I'm a science and cultural organizer and community engagement strategist. Uh, my name is Sarah Alvin. I'm from Ohio in the US and I just finished my junior year of college at Carleton College. Hi, my name is Davina George. I'm from the island of St. Lucia, but I'm in America right now, and I am currently in my senior year of college. Hi, my name is Javeria Ali, and I'm, uh, I'm from Pakistan, and I'm currently working with Global Education Motivators. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Ravenhill. I'm in Maine in the US and I run the uh, Buckminster Fuller Institute. Great to be here. Okay, uh, so a bit about the focus of our, our project. It's been on youth and climate change education. We know that people's level of education makes a difference in their understanding, acknowledging and taking action towards mitigating uh, the impacts of climate change but we also realize that education isn't enough and to quote somebody else or to build on somebody else's quote um culture will eat education strategy for breakfast and so we're looking beyond um what we think of as education in terms of school because we think that would be difficult to change um the time needed to to do that and we want to cross the river at the the narrowest point and for that reason we want to focus on youth and our idea leverages youth power, expanding on and connecting the assets that already exist within youth, cult youth culture, um, because we think that um, it can be a catalyst given the opportunity to flourish. And some of those things we sometimes see as negative, such as risk taking, um, the importance, and importance of establishing identity, wanting to be different from their parents, and of course their use of social media. So overall, we believe um, that it will take a youth-powered, technology-aided cultural strategy to catalyze the public education behave and behavior change and political action needed to address the problem of climate change. So our preferred state is that by 2030, all young people around the world understand that climate change is a dire issue, uh, actively participate in implementing the solutions that can mitigate it both locally and globally, and feel empowered, connected, and equipped to lead future generations in this effort. Um, we see the Sustainable Development Goals as being central to our message, especially the graphic and plain communication appeal. And in particular, uh, we feel that um, Action 13 uh, is the most aligned with what we're doing uh, across all the indicators. Uh, but in particular, 13.3.2. Uh, and where we say, um, where it mentions school curricula, because of our youth focus, we see, we kind of are swapping curricula for content because we're thinking about it in a, a social media uh, respect. Next slide. Sarah, you haven't. It. Is it frozen? Yeah, it's frozen. So, I I did change okay. it. Is it good now? Yeah, we can see now. So this is an okay. expansion on our frozen. preferred state that youth are globally connected and enabled via access to technology and social media to exchange information, ideas, and collaborate to build local, national, and international movements to combat climate change. Um, that the content they have access to is accurate, culturally responsive, and socially responsive, um, and takes into account uh, the youth alignment, but also their differences across uh, language, culture, religion, that kind of thing. And that ultimately they are empowered to source and fact check and share content about climate change and its solutions. Next slide. Again, that they're aligned in their attitudes uh, about the human contribution to climate change, that they know how to incorporate climate regenerating practices in their everyday lives for themselves, 
Um, but crucially, they see themselves as future leaders and stewards of the planet to advocate for uh, national service in climate action and that they receive strong public support um, for the initiatives that they propose. And that ultimately climate change is not only mitigated by this, but it's re reversed by a healthy regenerative, regener regener I'm not gonna say that word, <laughs> system. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so when we're thinking okay. about how we would measure this preferred state, uh, we would be thinking about global polls about climate change and how many people across the world are aware of and concerned about climate change. Um, about in, we would consider enrollment in our program, which of course we'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, we could count the number of people participating in climate activism. And then ultimately, as Anita was saying, we're hoping to see improvement in climate indicators, um, such as deforestation rate or global temperature. So um, when we were thinking about this preferred state and how to get there, we need to acknowledge what the problem is. So as it st stands now, this is awareness of climate change um, across the world. And ultimately, we would want this graph to look like this. But even more than that, we might want 100% of people to understand um, or to be aware of climate change and moreover to uh, be acting about it. And um, we truly believe that youth are the way to accomplish this. Um, and here are some statistics from the UN General Secretary's Envoy on Youth. And I wanted to point out these three numbers. So on the right, you can see 89% of youth respondents say that they can make a difference. And we believe that they are the people who can make a difference, not only because um, they're going to be future leaders, but they're also going to be the ones that are most affected by climate change out of the population today. And that's reflected in this middle statistic and that 73% of youth feel that they uh, feel the effects of climate change. But the problem lies in the leftmost statistic that 84% of surveyed young people think that they need more information. And um, other people who have tried to combat this issue, the fact that young people don't have enough information about climate change, turn to schools and curricula. Um, but as it stands right now, that isn't enough. Um, this is a statistic for the US. Uh, 42 percent of only 42 percent of schools teach climate change and on the screen are some reasons why teachers um, are not doing this um, and some of those include they don't believe in climate change or school doesn't allow it they don't know enough about it um, so uh, with this considered we believe that there is a faster way to um, have uh, young people or give young people access to climate change education and resources um, that will be uh, faster and then ultimately can ignite these young people and make them passionate about the issues so that um, eventually it can be incorporated into curricula. Um, so we uh, believe that social media is the way to do this. Um, this graphic is kind of an overview of many different um, um, aspects of social media across the last year. You can see, um, I wanted to point out this middle statistic here. Social media use is growing by almost 10% um, in the past. Um, learn to communicate to share um, information acquired and it's only be going, going to become even greater in the future. So given our relevance for social media and the youth, our team decided that we would like to come up with an app called the Climax app. And within the app, what we would like to see is a bunch of components that pertain to the app and are accessible to the app. Next slide. Um, out of those components, we would like to incorporate all these activities through our app. We would like to have uh, the app host a platform where people can attend events and seminars um, by the app detecting changes in your location and notifying you of relevant events and information around your area. 
we would like people to connect, interact, and build communities. Uh, anything that the youth would like, uh, we just curated it specifically to what works in that setting or that um, specific area that they're in, as well as what we like to do. Jawari, Jawari, hold on one second. We're, you're breaking up similar mm -hmm. to the way Ellen was breaking up. If It might work better if you uh, stop the video of you okay. and then your voice will have the all of the bandwidth that you're in, in wherever you're in Saudi Arabia. So let's mm -hmm. see if that works and we can hear you better. Okay, good. Can you hear me better now? I can, yes. Okay, so I'll just... Um, I'll start from the top in case I cut out. So as I was saying, our app has um, a lot of components that we would like the platform to support. The first one being events and seminars where we would like the youth to be able to detect changes in location. Um, the app will detect changes in location from where you are and notify you of relevant events and information. Um, in your local communities, we would also like for the app to help you connect, interact, and build communities where you are, create and start initiatives such as letter writing campaigns, protests, any other form of activism possible. We would also like the youth to share, upload, and collaborate with other, uh, share, upload content, and collaborate with other existing platforms such as Twitter or Instagram. And we're already aware of trending culture and viral trends. We know a lot of movements pick up steam and gain momentum from such activity. Uh, we would like to have a resources and information da database which provides vetted, accurate, and uh, accessible digital climate change, you know, education resources to students or people alike. We would also like to have the option where our app helps you reach out to specialists and experts in real time. For example, we thought of how we would like to have a team of sociologists on board to determine the specific barriers you might have uh, or the youth might have to climate change, change education in the communities worldwide. Um, we'd also love the app to help us partner with uh, projects and existing organizations such as the UNFCCC, the UN Youth Climate Summit, the UN Climate Change Learning Partnerships, and universities and other organizations. Um, we would also have a live climate indicator system where uh, something like the unstats.un.org has their SDG indicators up and the public could access that through our app as well. Um, we'd also like to host a lot of competitions and games through our app where we could incentivize a point system in which points are awarded when users either donate their time or money to climate causes and the collected points could donate to organizations that already exist, such as planting trees, etc. And we could collaborate with um, existing games such as Earth Dashboard or the UNF triple C that have existing games. From, um, for, from our app, the impact that we hope to have is to possibly have the um, different organizations and programs who are utilizing the same um, objectives to work together on this one single platform. And by doing so, we could also be able to generate donations that could go towards each organization or each cause to helping mitigate climate change. It also creates a um, the international community where everyone is able to join together on on each cause or each um, sustainable development goal that their country may have, as well as collabing with others to assist and also um, to gain more information and awareness. And we hope that it would not only be short term but a long term impact that could not only affect the youth of this generation but more generations to come. From the educational aspects, we hope that by utilizing this app, people are able to gain the information and knowledge that they um, um, need in order to gain more awareness about what may be happening in their communities and as well as nations abroad. And so that it's not only, it's not only set into one particular place. And, and it is, again, um, youth involved. And although it's targeted at the youth, it is also open to um, any other age category of the of the spectrum, but um, um, with the youth, we hope that it could they could be able to spread the awareness quicker and through different avenues as well. And using this, um, we could also create a trending sort of hashtag like we have for example the Me Too. And using this, we could stand by this hashtag and be able to go go about um 
bring the awareness to different people, different organizations, and different nations to build, to build awareness. So for our timeline, um, utilizing this, we first hope to start with the research and development, exploring the different landscapes, the education that already exists, going through that, that education and seeing if it, how accurate it is, um, which organizations we currently have, and the problems that they are facing towards accessibility, especially towards the youth, the different public attitudes towards climate change among the youth and, and also other, other um, generations. The Framework Institute, which is um, the best way to frame the platform so it's relevant and appealing, and also eventually opening it up to having the different users and um, planning for seminars or live events. Moving on to the two years, so we have the um, we have the enlisting youth um, influencers um, to spread awareness and the, using public figures to also um, gain more popularization of the of the app, um, developing the platform fuller, so fixing any in, um, issues that may arise um, throughout the course of the the years, and then continuing to spread the trends that we have and as well as partnering with different sponsors, as well as, for example, the UNFCCC, the UNESCO, the Sustainable Development Solutions, and the Climate Re Reality Project. Finally, for five years, we have hopefully to have the app running in all regions with um, all languages across the globe. We also hope to still have the art influencers and celebrities on board to increase the awareness and to push for more people to be on board with it. Um, continue with our updates and making sure that all the education provided is constantly updated yearly, going through it to make sure everything is accurate and also staying, staying connected with our partnerships. All right. So our initial budget is about $1.5 million for the first two years. Um, we got some feedback saying we could do it for cheaper. And though we could, we really want this to succeed and ensure that we build the network effect that's needed in order for this to be a, a true success. So the more people that are on the app, the more content there is, the more it serves its purpose um, and can get to all regions and all languages. Um, so this is a breakdown of uh, right. the different components. All good. We can go to the next one. Um, and then for fundraising, we're looking at a diversified approach of bringing in uh, lots of different players, philanthropists, and grants, um, investors, and sponsors, and really looking for partners that can come in not only with funding but also with um, support, with advice, with mentorship, with connections to celebrities, with connections to others who can really get the word out. Again, speaking to the network effect and needing this to have a big audience. And so what's next? Uh, we're looking to the UN, to foundations, to businesses to make this happen, to make this all real, uh, to endorse Climax and to also broadcast their events through the app and, and start to use it themselves. And for civil society and individuals, looking for people to download and engage with, give feedback to the app, make sure that we're uh, building something that's relevant to our users and share the app with others, as well as donate. Uh, I think everyone knows the temperatures hit 100 degrees in Siberia last week, and it's something we should have paid attention to when it hit 70 or 80 or 90, but here we are. And I think there's you know, a lot of potential within philanthropists and within um, our larger ecosystem for people to step up um, and hopefully for foundations to spend down their money so that we can have a future. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, do you have any questions? Thank you. Cool. Sure. Uh, my name is Omar Hernandez. I work as public information officer at the UN Academic Impact and the United Nations Secretary are here in New York. I'm originally from Venezuela. Um, actually, I found that the initiative is quite interesting. Um, just a very few suggestions. One it would be to take into account privacy data issues uh, because you know the use of apps is quite controversial in some countries and also uh, the laws applying to use of uh, technology and communication technology varies from country 
two countries. So it will be wise to take into account the different regulations in the different countries or in instances such as the European bloc that has unified laws regarding uh, management of, of privacy and, and data, personal data. So it will, it will be wise to, to take that into account whenever uh, you are in the developing process of the app. And also, although it, it, I know it costs, uh, it costs quite a lot to translate information into other languages, um, to the very least to have the app translated into the six UN official languages, uh, five aside from English. So that, that way you will reach probably more than half of the world's population uh, that speaks those languages uh, and more than half of the countries uh, currently members of the UN that has those languages of official languages. I know English is, is the you know the default language to produce these apps but to uh, not only that there, there is a digital gap but also there is a language literacy gap. So not necessarily people in, uh, in the developing countries that probably are the people you want to hear from the most uh, speak English. So it will be it will be it will be very nice to have um, the app uh, at least the very basic information related to the app translated into those languages. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Next. Hey, this is Jim. Um, great job, guys. And just a quick question. I think you had some information about how you're going to try to make it go viral. But maybe if you can, I think it's important probably to elaborate a little bit in your final write up about how you're going to drive engagement. Because I've seen a lot of apps where you, people spend a lot of money and it gets downloaded. Um, and people use it for the first week or two. And then the, the curve is pretty depressing on long term use. So I, I mean, you can comment on it briefly now, but that's probably something to put in your report. Thank you. Hey, Emma, um, oh. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, this is Harriet Sugarman. Um, great job, everyone. I am the chair of the New York City Climate Reality Chapter. I've been with Climate Reality since its start. I also chair uh, an organization called Climate Mama and work on intergenerational um, programs and with youth around the world. I love your app idea. Um, I would recommend having the metrics clear about, uh, they seemed really broad to me, and if I was uh, one of the investors or someone that you're trying to get to fund this, um, I think you have to um, uh, narrow those and also work on uh, showing how many people are using the app, etc., cetera, um, and in what countries and how that, uh, I would expand on that. I think the idea of informal education um, and then feeding into formal education because it's very varied uh, across uh, countries and certainly you know within countries as well. I would um, be interested in hearing more about are you actually going to generate events yourself for the app or who's going to curate the events that you're putting on there? How are you going to vet, um, you know, because there's such disparity between uh, good events, good data, and then something that's pushing in one direction or another. Um, I like the idea of having um, mentors or um, psychologists or whatever, however you phrase that, on board to help those um, folks. And what was my last point? Um, yeah, I think with the, with the global broad events, but then bringing it to local so people can actually use it in their local um, communities to find um, and create community, which I think is um, critical. Thank you and good luck. Emma, I saw you um, starting to say something earlier. I don't know if you're ready to comment now or not. You're, you're Emma, uh, you're... Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, okay, great. Yes, thank you so much. I think it's, congratulations, it's a very interesting presentation and very well thought. Um, I'm not an expert on apps, so I'm not gonna be giving you my, 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 my feedback from that point of view, but I will bring you much more my feedback in terms of some points that you highlighted that will inform the, the elaboration of this app. Uh, number one has to do with having vetted in scientific information. And I think this is critical because, you know, we know in this world and particularly in the social media, it is very confusing for people, you know, what is the real vetted scientific information. So I will make, I will suggest you, you, you focus on getting one, two sources that you will use to inform, the, the, to initiate at least uh, the work of this. Second point, 
And the one, for instance, is the climate tracker, which is, you know, good. You can, you know, there's other, there are others, but you should do that. I think it's important that you have from the start what are being, going to be the sources of information. Second, I think, you know, there has to, you are emphasizing a lot the cultural aspect, and I pretty much agree with that. But then you have to be specific. And maybe when you go to your pilots, you can do that. And in that sense, I will recommend that, for instance, from the very beginning, in addition to the comments that Omar has said, you know, study the, the property rights issues, intellectual property rights, privacy, etc., languages, critical. I will associate my associate the group, and you are already in some of those countries, but with a particular group that is already working on this, uh, in this area at least. And uh, for instance, let's say you focus on Brazil or you get a partner in Brazil, then you can really focus on deforestation if you want to focus on deforestation and get real data. There's a lot of data there. There are already lots of groups that are working, very active youth. So you, you really become culturally more specific and with information more specific as well. So that would be uh, my second point. And my third point would be that again, you know, we got, you narrow down a little bit, what youth are you talking about? Are you talking about high school? Are you talking college? You know, we need to narrow that because this is a big universe and you, it, it, so we, we need to figure out that too. But uh, I do think it's very exciting. And uh, I mean, you are aiming for 2030 and it's good. It goes with the SDGs, but also as you know, is a tremendous sense of urgency. Uh, we, we have a carbon budget that we need to, fix this in 24 years. So it's critical that, you know, we mobilize uh, uh, this. And um, again, I might perhaps be very opportunistic here and try to identify countries that can really make a difference in the big picture thing. Uh, big emitters, for instance, or countries that are having tremendous impact of, or if, the, if climate change occurs. So, you know, so then you really can galvanize the sense of urgency as well. Thank you, but I think it's great and it's a, an amazing effort. So I also will connect you with SDSN Youth. Uh, they work on this area and they, uh, and they probably also know a little more than I do on other things that are occurring in this, in this field. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, is any yeah. more? Lisa, um, you know, I'm from the Untours Foundation and um, I, I echo a couple of the other comments. One, youth is such a broad term, um, and I think understanding what that age group is will help you uh, get data around that age group. Um, and I wouldn't, and to me, when I think of youth, I, I think 30 and under. I don't think, you know what I mean, like 18, you know, who's using, I think it would also be around who's using social media, right? Um, and I would also say, you know, a lot of the increase in social media is from older people it's increase in youth. And so that could be a kind of a cool, you know, um, thing that happens as a result of targeting youth. Um, and I was interested when you said, um, you know, alternate education or when you're communicating, um, you know, through social media and educating through social media, what does that look like? Are we talking about, um, videos, you know, um, you know, surveys, you know, what, what does that look like? Um, so I was interested to know that. But on the money piece, you know, I'm a business person and that's a lot, a lot of money, uh, 1.6 million. So if it takes 1.6 million in a two-year startup, my next question is there's maintenance. It's an ongoing thing. And so, you know, in year, and beyond the first two years, what is the cost to keep this going. It, it, it has to be pretty steep. So I would imagine you'd want to continue to do research, um, you know, update, you know, information and, and, and graphics and whatever else you have going on in there. And so I would be interested to say, you know, in years three forward, we see, you know, a continuing cost of, I'm making this up, like $500,000 a year or, or whatever. So we would understand, uh, so that, that an investor would understand, you know, what it's going to take to really keep this going once it gets off the ground. Can, Thank can you. we respond to some of the points? Wait, wait, let's hear all the comments and then respond so that we've got, the reason I'm saying this, interjecting this is, is that we're running out of time, unfortunately. Okay. I would like to see this go on for another, you know, 
couple hours, but our present our evaluators don't have the time. Yeah, that's and okay. There's uh, two other teams. So other evaluators. I would uh, love to make a comment. Please. Uh, Sheldon Miller, I'm the uh, sort of science consultant for GEM. Uh, I think it's very good. You have a program of awareness and education. Uh, I did see you had their activism. Uh, I'm not completely sure how you intend to carry that out. But I want to say that we want to, people to act, and people act in self-interest. And I think the act should deal with how particular countries or maybe small regions, which include several countries, how will they be affected? What's the motivation for people to act about climate change? And there are two major targets that can act and make a big difference. One of them is government and the other is industry. And both of these have self-interest in uh, uh, mitigating climate change. And I think the app should incorporate that for regions of the world. Thank and you. Uh, Dave, uh, David and Charles both had uh, uh, their hands up. David, why don't you go first, followed by Charles. Hi, I'm David McCreary uh, from the Strategic Communications Division at the United Nations. Uh, my group, among other things, is uh, getting ready to release our own climate action app in probably the next month or so, and we uh, also operate the Sustainable Development website. Um, uh, a couple pieces of feedback is, um, I guess, why not a website as opposed to an app that I think the most difficult part about building an app is that phones operating systems change literally every year. So they're extremely expensive and, and cumbersome to keep up to date. Also, um, it would be interesting to see what kind of influencers you have in mind to promote this, this app or, or concept. Would they be general celebrities? Would be people with more of an environmental focus? Um, would they be scientists? Um, also briefly, I heard the term monetization um, mentioned, and would that mean that this app would also incorporate advertisers, and how would you consider that these advertisers uh, have a, a, a decent social reputation to be featured in the app and otherwise put money towards this app? Thank you. Uh, Charles. Yeah. Um, first of all, you did such a great job in um, um, I pre uh, really, uh, I was impressed with your, your work. Uh, you answer one of my uh, concern about reaching out to uh, uh, different groups with their languages. Now, we're not going to start by just the five uh, major languages because we have so many languages out there getting down. But um, to add to that is that, uh, um, have you thought about reaching out to other uh, uh, network uh, internet provider because some sometime they do not cover uh, the the vast part of the country uh, different uh, place <clears throat> places so if you can talk about uh, like corporate responsibilities if they can go ahead and then be join you with uh, your program to um, uh, cover most of the areas where there is no, they don't, do not have uh, internet uh, uh, access. So the youth can download or uh, have access to the internet. Thank you. I think we have heard from all of the um, evaluators. Um, Anita, um, one of the things that I left out of the introduction was um, some of the things <laughs> the evaluators might say are going to be answerable. You, you, you guys all dealt with them, you know, in, in great detail, but you just put into the slideshow a certain segment. Um, the most important thing about the evaluation is, is 
what just happened. They gave us a bunch of information, but I think we're all here to learn as much as we can. So we've got a few more minutes, but literally few as in one or two before we have to go on to the next presentation so that we can get the third one in before everybody has to leave. So if there's some comments, reaction to the uh, evaluators, uh, please go ahead. I could I could really sit down with everyone and have a, a you know a conversation about this whole thing, but I just wanted to make the point that everything we appreciate everything that you fed back, and actually personally, I those are all the questions that we have been discussing between each other as well, including you know what is youth, um, you know what age range we kind of came up with sixteen to to twenty five because that's the kind of term that is everywhere that we're to think of, but actually I think it's what we're interested in, like we said is crossing the river at the narrowest point and so we want to know who is the most influential group within that you know um that can mobilize and inspire uh, have that ripple effect we we are thinking about um organizing um as an approach and mobilizing we're thinking about um targeted universalism all these different constraints we're talking about Main, basically working with what already exists and making it that it's a resource that all the other actors that already existed that are doing this work that we could design it in a way that facilitates and it's really this platform and um and that it's an emergent strategy so we recognize the research and development part of it is to answer these questions and we really recognize that um, the behavioral science as well as the accurate scientific approach to to everything is what would inform the next stage so i don't think we're precious on no it has to be this it's more uh we're working towards something and what is the best way to really